kick it off to the next presenter. Thank you, Lori. Okay, so now I'm going to be quickly introducing my committee. Hello, everyone. My name is Jenna. I am serving as the Student Affairs Committee Chair this year, and um, these are my SAC members. Um, so we serve on the student government here at Santa Clara, and basically we're in charge of allocating funds to all of you after you have submitted your funding requests. Um, so if you aren't aware of who's behind that, that's us. Um, and this is really a journey of students supporting students. We really want to help all Santa Clara students have an opportunity to enjoy as many events as possible and really um, work together as a community and be able to collaborate. Um, so that's our main goal. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into how we make our decisions regarding allocations, but we really are here for all of you. And we look forward to working closely with you throughout this quarter and beyond. Um, and you will also have one of these members, the names in bold, one of them will be your liaison for the quarter. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but now I will pass it off to Kevin. Hello, my name is Kevin Ham. I'm currently serving as the VP of Finance for ASG. Um, I'm in charge of the finance branch. And basically our team is responsible for overseeing all the student organization funding um, and spending on campus. More specifically for RSOs, we're responsible for processing all student RSO reimbursements. Um, and we're also available to advise on event budgeting and event planning. Um, but yeah, my team's here to support all the finances and the financial aspects of kind of student orgs. And we're excited to see where this quarter goes. Great, thank you, Kevin. Okay, so now we're going to go over liaisons. Um, if you could all please take out your cell phones and scan the QR code that's on the screen currently. Um, I will also be sending out a little recap email after this meeting um, if you can't currently scan um, the QR codes during this presentation, but if you can, it would be great to do that now. Um, so if you aren't already aware of of what liaisons are. It is basically a um, committee member on my committee, the Student Affairs Committee, and um, they're here to answer any questions that you may have during the funding process, during the reimbursement process, throughout the whole um, process that your RSO goes through in order to request funding and receive reimbursements afterwards as well. Um, and Obviously, um, one person doesn't always know all of their information, so um, we just offer this liaison as kind of a personal connection to the SAC committee, and um, if they can't personally answer your question, they can forward the question to um, either Lori, Kevin, or I, um, so that you can correctly have your question answered, um, but this is just a really great way to kind of make this the whole process more personal and you know that you have a specific person to reach out to. They are very responsive to your needs. So um, it's really important that you know who your liaison is. Um, as a reminder, uh, a lot of the members on the SAC committee have changed this quarter. Um, so if you're assuming right now that you know who your liaison is and that um, you remember them from last quarter, they most likely have changed. So I would just really quickly scan the QR code and check out who it is. Um, and it's also really important to know the name of the person because that liaison is going to be the person that's going to be sending out all of the emails for your allocations for your RSO as well. Um, so when you see their name pop up in your inbox, you really want to click those emails um, so that you can see the allocations that your RSO received. So um, I can also go back to this QR code later. And again, you are going to get an email with the link to the spreadsheet as well. Um, but I'm going to move on now. So now we're going to be talking about discretionary funding, which is what my committee is in charge of, um, just to help you all better understand this process, because I feel that it hasn't fully been communicated in the past. So hopefully all of you are paying attention and can kind of get to know discretionary funding a little bit better, um, because I know it can be confusing and this process is important to understand based on from the RSO's perspective as well. So first off, I'm just going to quickly explain what discretionary funding is. Um, so the SAC discretionary funds that we have is also described as supplemental funding. And what we mean by that is that the SAC funds that we have can only cover a part of any of your events expenses. They're not meant to cover the entire expense of any of your events or apparel or supplies or anything like that. Um, this has always been meant to be supplemental to other sources of funding that you may have. Um, and we'll talk about that more later on, but some of those may be fundraisers or event tickets. And um, 
when you request allocations, this is going to be done in the beginning of the quarter. And if you've been here for a while and been requesting money from um, SAC for a while, you may know that it used to be on a rolling basis where you could request throughout the quarter. Um, but now we do it so that the deadline is at the end of week two, and we'll specify the date of when funding is due or sorry requests for funding are due for this quarter um, a little bit later on in this presentation as well but just so we're all aware um, you must request allocations for the funds um, at the start of the quarter rather than on a rolling basis and um, the requests are fielded through the SAC discretionary funding form which is another google form that you're going to be um, probably getting pretty comfortable with during this quarter basically what you do is you submit your request through through that form and then we will look at your requests through there um, and just so you are aware your rso will not receive the entire requested amount um, if you're assuming that just because you're requesting a small amount of money or a smaller amount than you usually do um, that does not mean that your entire event will be um, funded by sac just as a reminder it is supplemental to other sources of funding um, and there's a lot of different ways that we make decisions about allocations, but SAC really does allocate based off of how the SC, SCU community benefits from these events. Um, so remember when you're filling out this discretionary funding form for all of your different events that you are specific and detailed, the more information that you give us, the more likely we are to better understand your events and most likely um, allocate more percentage of your um, request than if you weren't to provide us details because if there are no details included in the funding request, we most likely won't know exactly what we're funding. Um, so it's difficult for us to get an idea of how many people it's really going to benefit. Make sure to include in the funding requests um, how it will be used and who benefits from these events and et cetera. You can describe a lot more details than that, but those are just two main things that you should really be including in your um, requests. And also remember to submit them on time and accurately in order to maximize your allocation as well. And if you ever have any questions or need some feedback about um, how your funding requests look, you can always reach out to anyone on SAC. So that could be your liaison, that could be me, um, any other committee members as well or anyone on finance. Um, we're all here to help you and we really wanna make sure that your funding requests are accurate and um, the best that they can possibly be. Um, okay, so here's a really important deadline. If you have, um, you can write this down on a piece of paper or put it in your calendar, but just so we're all aware, the deadline for funding requests this quarter is going to be the Sunday of week two as always, and that is January 16th. And they're gonna be due at 5 p.m. Um, in the past, this has been fairly lenient um, in terms of the deadline. People have been able to kind of submit their requests a little bit later than this, but I am just letting all of you know that this deadline is going to be um, a hard deadline and really do try to get in these funding requests by January 16th at 5 p.m. Okay, so... Um, there's a lot of stuff that happens after you initially submit your discretionary funding form, um, and you may not be aware of those steps. So I'm just going to quickly go through those so that we're all on the same page and you're all aware of the different things that happen. Um, so first, once you submit your discretionary funding request form, let's say you do that before the end of week two, that's all good. Um, the SAC members will then review each of the requests and distribute funds. Um, so you may be assuming that when you receive your allocation that has been um we have just recently reviewed your request but in reality we like to send out all of our allocations all at once just so it it kind of is an organized system and everyone receives their allocations um, but we are really working hard right after um any of the discretionary funding requests have been submitted um, we meet many times each week to uh, really figure out what we would like to allocate um, to each of the rso's so it's a big job for us but we do work really hard for all of you um, in order to get your allocations back as soon as possible. And then once we've made all of our decisions and all the allocations have been made, um, you will then receive an email from your SAC liaison detailing the allocation amount for each of your requests. This may come in one email or it may come in several different emails depending on how many events um, you requested funding for. Um, and then once you receive your allocation, you can then spend that amount in accordance with the CSI guidelines, making sure that you're doing that, also being responsible within the COVID guidelines as well. And then once you spend that money, you will then submit a reimbursement request. So while you're doing this, 
be responsible in submitting your funding request. So we really ask that you plan out your event beforehand. Um, don't make rough estimates because it's really important to realize that um, SAC only has a certain amount of money and we really want to fund as many events as possible. And if you're giving a way higher number than you really need for your event, um, it's unfair to other RSOs that are really putting in the time and effort to research the vendors and the past expenses and expected attendance for their events. So really do try to research these things and get the most accurate number as possible um, when submitting your funding requests. And also, just so we all know, um, if you ever hear someone mention an NOL, that actually stands for Notice of Legislation. And what that includes is the allocation that you will receive. So it basically details the allocated funding that SAC has decided for that specific event request and also how it can be spent. So a little bit more of the details, maybe it's for supplies or for apparel. Um, you'll see that within your NOL. And in the liaison's email, um, each of these emails will include the events NOL. So as I just described, the allocation, and then a link to the CSI event spending and COVID guidelines, just so like it's an easy access um, to find out how you can really spend this money. And lastly, we're also going to be including a reimbursement guide um, just to help you understand how to receive your money after you spend the amount that um, has been allocated to you. And really quickly, I just wanted to go through a kind of an outline of a step-by-step -step guide of funding. If you're looking to request funding this quarter and then also receive your reimbursements, kind of what to do and the steps um, consequently for each of the different things that you have to do in order to um, complete this process correctly. So the step number one in order to request funding and receive reimbursements is attend the RSO training. So you're completing this right now, which is great. Thank you all for coming. I know it's week one. I know we all have a lot of stuff on our plate this week, but it's really important that you're taking the time to do this. Um, so once RSO training is complete, you will then fill out the completion Google form and the feedback form. So these are two separate Google forms that will be at the end of this presentation in the form of QR codes. And again, I will be sending re cap emails um, after this RSO training, which will have the links as well. So if you can't currently scan the QR codes, don't worry. Um, and then three, once you have filled out these completion forms and the feedback form, you can then plan out your events for the quarter, including all of the details that I described earlier, including um, the funds required for each of these events. So once everything is planned out, you have all of the different details included, um, you are then going to fill out the discretionary funding Google form for each of the events that you plan. Um, but we do want to stress this quarter that if you do have any reoccurring events, you do not have to fill out a separate Google form for each of those. And then once you submit each of those discretionary funding Google forms, you can then contact your liaison with any questions regarding funding. Um, you can also reach out to anyone on finance. There's a lot of people here to help you. Um, so obviously liaison is the first person you go to, but they can also direct you to others to answer your question more properly. And then number six, um, once you are spending money and you've received your allocation, you will then save your physical receipts. Kevin will kind of touch on this a little bit later, um, but it's really important to save them in order to prove that you've purchased um, and it will help with the reimbursement process later on. And then um, once you've purchased everything for your event, you will then fill out and submit the reimbursement form either in person or over email when it's over $200. And last step is receiving your reimbursement, which will either be in the Locatelli Center when it's under $200 or through direct deposit when it's over $200. And these is, the, sorry, this is just a simple little list of um, things that RSOs can request and things that RSOs cannot request funding for. Um, so it's really important that you remember that RSOs cannot request funding for Airbnbs and gift cards. Um, so remember that, just keep that in your head. You'll know why later, but RSOs cannot request funding for Airbnbs and gift cards. Um, this list is subject to change with COVID and everything going on. So. Um, this is the current guidelines, but it could also change just so you know. Um, but yeah, make sure to remember those two things that you cannot request funding for currently. And I know um, there's not many things that are free anymore, but these are a few re free resources that we found for all of you to utilize if you wanted to quickly take a picture or write a few down, whatever. Um, but this is just an easy way to allow RSOs to have a few different resources if you can't necessarily spend the extra money or um, if you didn't receive the entire allocation amount that you 
wanted or looked for, um, then these are some really great free resources, resources for all of you. And I will also be sending out these slides again in the recap email. So if you want to check back on this, I will definitely have that. Um, okay, and then quick reminders about funding. The SAC fund has a total of $92,500 for all of the RSOs for the entire year. That's our big number. Um, and just within fall quarter, SAC received $92,897 worth of requests. Requests. So that is more than our entire year's budget, and we were only able to allocate $30,830. Um, so just trying to be transparent with all of you, that is why you may have not received the allocation numbers that you were hoping for. Um, it's kind of um, not within our um, capabilities to make this funding higher currently. So um, we're trying to work with what we have, but we really do want to make sure that we're um, helping the entire SCU community and really benefiting everyone in giving as much funding as we possibly can. Um, so remember with that um, huge number of requests that we have and the small number of funding that we have to be responsible in using your SAC funding, really do try to utilize it well um, and responsibly. And also bear in mind, again, that SAC will not be able to fund the entire amount requested. It is without, it's not within our capabilities. So please do remember that. And um, you also want to submit reoccurring events as one request. So if you have any weekly meetings that um, maybe you need certain supplies for every week that cost $50 each week, instead of submitting 10 different requests for your 10 different weekly meetings, you can submit one big request um, and it makes it easier on both the RSO and SAC to just receive one request. Um, and then uh, when you can find other sources of funding for your RSO activities as well, um, some of which may be fundraising. This is a really great way to um, receive more funding. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's a really great way to see receive uh, more funding. You can also sell event tickets if it's open to the SCU community. You can charge a small fee to enter your event. Um, or you could also charge small club dues if you have a lot of members and you just ask for a small $5 um, do in the beginning of the quarter, it can really be helpful to provide a little bit more funding for the quarter. Um, and SAC or finance can also help in securing other funding, so you can always reach out to us as well. And as always, if you have any questions, please do reach out to your SAC liaison first, and then if they can't answer anything, they will also direct you to someone who can. Okay, and this is something a little bit different for this quarter. Um, we're uh, offering a alternative funding option to all of you. Um, so if you could just listen carefully to these details, um, it's really important that you understand this other option um, because it can be useful for a lot of RSOs, but for a lot of other RSOs, it's not necessarily the right option. Um, but we are offering that RSOs can request an immediate $100 allocation for the entire quarter um, to be spent at the club's discretion and no questions will be asked as long as you're spending it on some sort of RSO activity or event. Um, that is completely okay. And you don't have to submit any additional information to SAC. And it's kind of similar to ASG funds, if you know what that is from previous years. However, if you do opt for this $100 in the beginning of the quarter, you will not be able to submit any additional requests for the quarter. Um, and if you do think that this is something that your RSO would be interested in, you definitely don't have to decide right now. Maybe you want to talk amongst your members um, or, or your exec boards. It's completely okay to wait until whenever you would like to do this to do this. But um, once you do decide that you would like this, you can say on the discretionary funding form, select yes on the $100 allocation question. Uh, but really quickly, I do just want to stress that you would only be receiving this $100 for the entire quarter and nothing else. Um, so if you don't need the money right away or need more than $100, please do not choose this option. It's most likely not the right choice for your RSO. And really quickly, just wanted to go over the changes for this quarter. Um, remember that you can o you only have to submit one request for reoccurring events, as I mentioned before. So any sort of weekly meetings, maybe tabling that you're doing every week, um, it can only be one request. And also, we just wanted to give a rough deadline for when we plan on having our NOLs sent out by. Um, most likely, SAC will send out NOLs by the end of week three, and we're really trying to hold ourselves accountable to that. So hopefully, all of you will receive those by the end of week three. 
Again, there are new liaisons. So if you're assuming you know who your liaison is and um, they have changed this quarter, please make sure to um, check out that link and look at the spreadsheet really quickly just to see what um, your liaison is for this quarter. And um, as a reminder, the funding form should include all monetary details. Um, so please be specific. Otherwise, your event will not be funded um, because we simply don't have the details to be able to fund your event. And again, there's the $100 option that you can opt for to immediately receive an NOL, um, but you may not submit any additional requests. So just keep all of that information in mind. Um, it's pretty important stuff and they are different changes from the last quarters. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna run through reimbursements real quick. I know it's been a long presentation, so I'll do this as quickly as possible. Um, but real quick, so reimbursements are the way that um, basically money gets back to you on campus. Um, the NOL gives your RSO permission to spend out of our fund, the SAC discretionary fund. Um, and in doing so, what the way it works is that you would spend your own money and get reimbursed for it after. Um, but basically we'll be sending out a step-by-step -step reimbursement guide that will go out with the SAC liaison emails. Um, that way you have like a side-by-side -side like guide to go through spending. Um, and all these reimbursements um, are actually processed by my team, the ASG finance team, as well as the CSI staff. So that's Arcelia, who is the senior administrative assistant in um, the Locatelli Center, which is located like behind the basketball stadium, soccer stadium area. Um, there's some real important reminders for reimbursements. You must keep all your physical receipts. Um, the university doesn't allow us to reimburse anything that doesn't have the original physical receipt. Um, so if you go out to a vendor like Target or something that gets uh, and you print out a receipt, you need to turn that in with the reimbursement. Um, for online orders, things such as Amazon, um, you need to submit a printed copy of the invoice. Um, we're looking specifically for the invoice, not like a shipping confirmation or an order confirmation, but an actual invoice. Um, and then when submitting your reimbursement request, um, any physical reimbursement requests, which are forms that are have to be filled out if the reimbursement is under $200, um, those forms go to the upstairs of Locatelli Center. Um, if the reimbursement is over $200, it gets emailed to me. Um, and on the form, there's a little section that explains like which kind of fund the money comes out of. And on that, you would just check off discretionary fund. Um, and that's how you would get your SAC allocations reimbursed. Okay, thank you, Kevin. And for this last slide, we just have the two forms that we ask all of you to scan right now. Um, it's really important that at least two of your RSO members fill out that first form on the left-hand side that says RSO training completion form. Um, it just asks a few questions about some of the stuff we went over today. Um, and then we also ask that at least one member from your RSO fills out the fall quarter feedback form. Um, if you've already done so, that's perfectly fine. We, we sent it out in um, early or late November, I believe. It was right before Thanksgiving break. So if you've already filled that out, that's totally great. Um, but just so you know, at least two members of your RSO have to fill out that first form, the completion form, and at least one member of your RSO has to fill out the feedback form in order to receive funding. Okay, so at this point we're done with content for this presentation, but if anyone has any questions um, that they would like to ask us, you can either raise your hand or put it in the chat. Um, but yeah, please continue to fill out these forms. And also I will, again, if you can't scan right now, I also will be sending out a feedback form, or sorry, not a feedback form, a recap email at the, at the end of all of this so that you can have all this information um, and also receive these forms in link form instead of QR code form. So ask away if you'd like. Yeah, go ahead. Um, hi, so I have a question about the recurring um, form, like recurring payments kind of thing. So let's say like we have a meeting every week and we spend like 20 bucks a week on that. Um, would we have to submit a request for all the total um, recurring meetings or what, like, how would we go about that? Yeah, so if you have um, any reoccurring meetings, you can simply state in your funding request that um, for the description, you can just say weekly meetings and then um, in the details kind of put what supplies you're going to need for all of those weekly meetings. Um, and in the discretionary funding form, you'll see that there's an option for reoccurring events to just state the first date of um, your events. So you can basically just put all of the supplies that you're going to need for all your weekly meetings and put that big number at the end. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, of course.
And if you don't have any questions after you filled out the completion form or the feedback form, you're more than welcome to exit the meeting. But just to make sure that you do fill out the completion form because once the Zoom meeting is officially over, we're going to close the completion form so that we can see uh, everyone who is eligible for discretionary funding before we email out the presentation and everything. So just to make sure you uh, complete that before you leave the Zoom meeting. Um, I had a quick question. Um, we got allocated a certain amount of money for fundraising. But then when we talked to our RSO advisor, they told us that um, we actually weren't eligible to do those things and that it should have gotten denied so we couldn't get reimbursed for it. Is there any way we could prevent this from happening in the future? Uh, what was the item that you all uh, fundraised for? Um, like the item that we were trying to build up to? Yeah. Um, it's a a medical um, volunteer trip to Guatemala. Uh, okay. Um, for that one, if you want to email Ted and I, Ted, the director for CSI, and then we can uh, possibly provide further information. I know in the fall, um, when you we when we did the presentation for what was not able to be funded, I believe it was like out of state or out of country travel because of the COVID guidelines. Um, but yeah, if you just wanna email us, then we can get uh, more information on that. Great, thank you. Yeah. Sarah, you can go ahead. If we've had like a previous balance that's positive, is there any way to like check that exact number and how we should access that, or if we should still just submit for reimbursements um, given that number. Are you referring to like your club balance, like your club uh, fund yeah. balance? Um, for that one, you would email Arcelia Rodriguez and she would be able to give you the updated balance for that. Um, in terms of like the SAC allocation, there is no such thing as like a positive balance. Any money that, uh, or any funding that is not used doesn't get transferred to your RSO after um, it remains with yeah I meant like um I know ASD used to do it where like if you showed up for training you got like an automatic amount in you uh a few years back uh so that's who I should email to check with that so thank you so those um what you're referring to are called they were called ASG funds um they were actually um we got rid of them two years ago and we replaced it with um kind of this RSO training and and the regular um I guess, deadline-based um, expense or request form. Um, so there is no outstanding balances for ASG funds, um, or like the $200 that you got just for showing up for the club training. Does that oh, answer your question? Okay. Thank you. Uh, are we allowed to ask for information on the form that we missed uh, in case we like missed the, um, missed the information on the slides? Uh, the slides here will be sent out um, in a summary email, but if you oh. have specific questions, you can email any of the three of us and we can provide you more information directly. Well, I meant for like the completion form, like <laughs> in case we, because I like missed one of the info. So um, um, go ahead and send me an email and then we can figure this out um, later. Oh. Oh, oh, you mean the score for the... Uh, yeah, I meant like, because I, I missed one of them on the slides and it's like... Yeah, the presentation will be sent out later in the slides and the answers for those will be on the slides. Okay. I know there are uh, some people that have been filling out the form that got the date wrong for when discretionary funds are due. So anyone in the current meeting, if you know the answer, feel free to raise your hand and remind others. We do want to make sure you don't miss the deadline or you can put it in the chat. We won't give you the answer because we already gave it, but we want to see if anyone else is paying attention to when the deadline is. Sunday week two. What time? 5 p.m. Awesome. Okay, I love seeing all the answers 
in the chat. Yes, so 5 p.m. Uh, the reason why it is that so that um, the next time that SAC will meet during, um, they'll be able to go through if there's any questions or anything like that. It'll just it just helps us with effic efficiency. Other than making it midnight, and then we really only have one day before our next meeting or whatever the next meeting may be, especially for the ones that are applying for the hundred dollar funding. Uh, we're able to prep in advance for that and be able to send things out sooner. So that's why 5 p.m. Go ahead. Just to clarify further, it's Sunday week two, that's the 16th, right? Not the 9th. Gotcha, thank you. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, for the end of quarter feedback form, is that do you like right as the meeting ends or can I have time to like fill that out? Um, I know that one does take some time, especially if you wanna um, include a lot of detail in your answers. Um, so it'd be okay to um, take a little bit longer to answer that, that feedback form, yeah. Okay. And only one person from your RSO, as a reminder, um, needs to fill that out. But if you have multiple members that want to give that feedback, I think the more feedback is the best right now um, as we plan going forward and everything. So if you think it'd be helpful for other members to fill it out, but we're, we're only going to check if at least one RSO filled out. I mean, one member per hour, so. Does anyone else have any questions? I got a, I got a quick question on the, the form. Is when it says um, how many weekly meetings slash events does your RSO, RSO hold, does that refer to like the total number throughout the semester or like the number per week? It'd be the number per week. So let's say you had a general meeting and then a workshop, it would be two per week. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. And that data is super helpful so that in the future when we want to try to advocate to get more funding or whatever it may be, we can say, well, there are this many meetings that are occurring every week, every quarter. And we need more funding because look at all of these events that we have by this many RSOs. So that's super helpful to um, put as much information as you can. If there are no other questions, feel free to go. If there's anyone that just wants to ask a quick question that's more specific to your RSO, you can uh, wait until majority have left. But thank you all so much. And thank you to Jenna and Kevin. I appreciate you both so much. And uh, anyone else, just email us, chat us, anything that you need, and we'll, we'll help you out. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.